to the life of hair my name is james atkinson thank you for choosing to join into this week's episode now this week's episode is a fantastic client of mine <laughs> sally welcome sally thank you sally has been a client of mine for a pretty long time now she's had many variations on different bob styles and i think really uh where our kind of client uh hairstylist relationship started was when i turned sally's hair from what she used to have a very pretty high maintenance blonde color into something uh, more natural like you see now and i absolutely love it all her friends love it sally loves it she doesn't have to have her hair colored anymore and there's a lot of hairstylists out there that don't necessarily think that's a good idea to steer people away from having hair colors but i very much think it is a good idea and i'm sure sally probably agrees I certainly do. <laughs> her wallet agrees anyway today we're going to look at sort of a bixie a softer bixie i know it's very popular at the moment people are loving the bixie cut but this is probably a little bit more of a wearable version for clients that don't really want the kind of more extreme version of the big Sally's hair was that we probably left it a little long last time so she's given me something a little shorter a little bit more chin length a little bit more layered obviously that'll give her a bit more um and a little bit more movement now uh, casting my mind back to when we cut Sally's hair last time some of this within a similar remit layers not layers much stronger not stronger all of those kind of things all within the same kind of bob dial so um Sally has got fairly straight medium to fine textured hair that doesn't get a lot of volume in it. So those layers that you're going to see from the, the, the consultation pictures are really going to help uh, Sally's hair with the volume and stuff like that. So I think they're a really good idea. But you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's very difficult for Sally to get her hair to do a lot. So if you've got a client like that, layers are a really good idea. Uh, but obviously always remember that when you do layers, if the hair is finer, that you want to be careful what sort of layers you do because it will take some of the weight out of the perimeter. So we'll talk a little bit about the do's and don'ts in a minute when we're cutting the hair and some of the things that I think about while I'm cutting the hair. But hope you enjoy this episode. If you do, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new here for more content like this or to enjoy the other 300 videos that I've made to this point and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so the plan now, we're going to take center parting straight down Sally's head. So we're going to take our section and continue it down the center back and then what we're going to do is separate the hair out like this each direction and put our uh, comb onto the occipital bone and then we'll take a horizontal section across like so and that will give us a nice clean starting point we've got a nice square shape through the back here to start our bob shape now the way that I tend to take this on is I cut this very first section around a centimeter shorter than the desired length. In fact, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, that's how Sally's hair is at the moment. She's got this shorter piece underneath and then she's got this longer piece coming over the top. So um, we're gonna then just come in, we're going to tension our section down like that, wrap it with our comb and we're gonna cut a square line We don't want a huge amount of tension because Sally's hairline underneath here changes density a little bit. The texture of Sally's hairline is kind of thicker in the middle, softer in the edges, jumps a little bit underneath. We don't put bags and bags and bags of tension on something like that. We just want light tension. So home in, quick tap to release some of the tension and then cut our square line. Visually eyeball your, your, your section now to make sure that you're happy with it being square. So nice and simple after this, what we do is we take subsequent sections. We're gonna then come up about two and a half inches. That's probably more like three to be fair, but that's fine. It's gonna come through to um, from in between the crown and the top of the occipital bone there. And we're gonna drop it through to the front top of the ear here. And then we can kind of visually see now where we're gonna kind of take this to versus where we are at the moment. Remember to come slightly past our previous section so by about five millimeters or so and then work our way around now ideally you would be traveling around the head so you'd be moving either the client's chair or your body position and then cutting your line so that you are directly in front of your set a little tricky for me to do that in demonstrative purposes because I will be in the way of you being able to see. But when you're in the salon, make sure your body position is where to the section. Final section, because there's layers in the hair already, we can drop this entire section down in one go. And we'll note that in the back here, the layers don't actually meet the section that we've already cut. So therefore, 
There's no need to take a really sort of fine section here because we'll have no hair to cut and it will just be a pointless set. So this takes us straight through to the front side and what we're going to do, we're going to get our Sally if we just lovely tilt her head just a fraction over to her right. This will help with any uh, graduation in the perimeter. So we want to keep Sally's hairline reasonably wrong and with some density in it. We don't want it to go all wispy, which I was mentioning earlier on. We want to kind of keep the strength in the shape and it's really important to kind of remember how to do that and a lot of that is how we layer Sally's hair afterwards and how much we over direct the hair to the middle um, which I'll talk about in more detail as we layer it but uh, we can see that we're using very little tension we use utilizing the natural fall of the hair and making sure the hair is not kind of swinging backwards and forwards it's just exactly where it's going to live this will ensure that when Sally does her hair she will be able to do it much easier because she's not relying on the hair being in a very specific place and if Sally doesn't do her hair and she just gets out of the bath and or shower and just leaves it to dry it will still sit in a reasonable way and I think that's really really important to remember. Okay so we are on to the layers now with the Bixi haircut generally it's all taken from the fringe length now Sally normally wears a fringe a bit shorter than this so it's just out of her eyes so obviously her fringe is growing a wee bit in this instance so we take a bit off the fringe to use that as a guide for the rest of the layers so I'm just going to spray it down that evenly damp when you're cutting people's hair is really important and whether it's quite dry or whether it's soaking wet it doesn't make a huge amount of difference it just needs to be the same from start to finish so if you're slow at cutting hair or for some reason it's starting to dry out someone's hair's drying very quickly make sure that you try and keep the hair even dampness throughout the haircut because hair is stretchy when it's wet and obviously the elasticity changes and that will ultimately impact the whole thing. So we're going to take a triangle section which you can see just there on Sally's hair so it goes from the center parting through to the corners of the recession and then we're going to take that section and we're going to elevate this section horizontally straight out from the head shape and we're going to cut off about a centimeter to start with because that's pretty much how much Sally's fringe has grown and that's a little long so we'll just cut another three or four millimeters off that section just to make sure they're happy with that. We've got the hair under kind of very little tension throughout the sections anyway. I'm going to pull all the hair straight out square, straight towards me. Each section is going to be pulled out straight towards me. So our subsequent section will be taken vertically down the head like so. So we will have a piece of hair that is now pulled forward towards me. Now this is where it gets really important in terms of the density of Sally's hair will be the elevation that we use here. So I'm, I've gathered up some of her fringe, but not all of it. But I've got a nice clear guide from the section underneath, which I'll show you. Hopefully you'll be able to see. Uh, if I move my hand, there we go. You can see that hair that's just from the fringe area. I'm going to take that hair, elevate it straight up. We've got the hair coming out from the head at about 45 degrees. And we're going to cut a square line. Now we're going to get the next piece of this section that we sectioned off. We're going to elevate that hair straight up about 45 degrees. So the same cutting angle and we're going to use that section we've just cut as our guide. I'm going to cut a square line and then we're going to take on a last section on this side. We're going to elevate the hair straight up and then we're going to cut a square line. Now what we'll see is that our perimeter hair down here fallen away and that is creating strength and weight in the perimeter of Sally's hair down here but we are creating lovely layers in Sally's hair with the virtue of elevation. So that is a really nice way and this creates that really nice bixie layer but as I say we're going to do a sort of softer shape because it can be softer and I think that's really important to know that the bixie can be soft and a little bit more loose and not so kind of short and sharp. So we're going to take our next section now vertically straight down the head we're going to elevate it up and we're going to bring it back to our previous section and again take our section that we've taken vertically down the head. We're going to elevate but we're twisting the hair remember we're elevating and it's coming towards me and we're twisting it so that we've got a horizontal finger angle and then we can see that our perimeter's fallen away so we're protecting the perimeter on Sally's hair so we keep some of that density. We just want to make sure we go through that section elevating those sections straight up 
and cutting that square line. And we're going to take another section now, vertically straight down the head, pick the hair up, elevate the hair straight up. Now in the instance of this, I'm, I'm over directing each section that I take to pretty much one fixed point. Because what I what don't want to do is take lots of weight away from the back of Sally's hair. So I'm just going to work my way down vertical section again, elevate the hair straight up and cut a square line just like that. Now what I will say is we can always go back and double check that this is we're happy with this and we don't want it to be more layered once we've put the layers in but I would always err on the side of caution when the hair texture is finer because we don't want to create a hole or a weak point on the perimeter. So we can see now we've got layers in here that run through to about the corner of Sally's eye at the shortest point which are indicative to what the fringe does anyway. Read the back all we do now is we pivot our section like that, pull that hair up and forward. And we can see because it's already layered, it doesn't meet our layers that we've already cut in here. And if we take a, a section to cross check, we can see that we've got a really nice clean line that runs from the front hairline, from the fringe position, going diagonally backwards, getting short to long. So I'm gonna repeat that process on the opposite side. There we go, Sally, you can cut your hair next time. You can do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right then, so that's the wet shape cut in here. Now what we're gonna do is dry it off. Really simple, what you wanna do is blast it, especially on hair like this, and just get as much texture movement in it as possible. I'm gonna put like a volumizing spray in it just to give it a bit more texture and a bit more body. It's by Joyco, uh, liquid to powder texturizing finishing spray. Uh, so that you can hear the old, that'll probably be horrible on the audio, but uh, got a little ball inside it. So we're gonna spray that in, blast it off. I'll give you a little look at that. I won't show you the full styling uh, regime because it is really just about blasting the hair, especially when the hair's fine like this. If you put a brush in it, you start to smooth it. You start to sort of lose some of the texture. So I don't necessarily recommend round brushing it at this point, but um, Obviously each to their own, you go with your you know, preferred way of styling the hair. But uh, for me, it's just about getting that texture and movement into the hair and kind of making it all, you know, show off all those layers that we've just put in. So let's get on with that. Uh, when it comes to putting product into the hair, um, you know, give it a liberal spray, but if you've got products that are a bit sticky sometimes, obviously be careful about how much, I know this isn't sticky, so it can, you can go overboard, not that you want to, um, if you need to get a bit more oomph in the hair. And then it is literally, take the nozzle off to get the most kind of turbulence and movement in the hair and aim at the root. The airflow will hit the head and bounce back and obviously create more movement and texture like that. So don't whift it around the ends, just get it in at the root area. It also dries quicker roots to ends than it does if you try and dry the ends back to the roots because moisture will always take it with gravity and travel back down towards the root area. Go for the roots and dry it out towards the end. So this is not going to sound great for a minute but I won't show you too much of what I do but it is literally like this. Ready? Sally's hair has been blasted uh, to within an inch of its life. And actually, we're just having a really interesting conversation. I've been doing Sally's hair for many years, as we've mentioned previously. And it's funny, Sally was saying when I was blow, blow drying her hair, she said, oh, you said not to use a brush. And I always use a brush. And uh, maybe I told Sally to use a brush on her hair. I, I can't remember but exactly. I'm not sure Sally will be able to remember that either. <laughs> but obviously, you know, I'm going to hold my hands. I probably should have said to Sally a long time ago, it'd be better for you to just put some mousse in your hair or put some, you know, hair shake or whatever the product is that you're going to use. It really doesn't make a huge amount difference it just wants to be a volumizing product and blast it because you know ultimately you're going to make more texture and more movement in your hair power of helping a client style their hair at home and it's something that i'm about to talk about in my new digital hair academy in the business section is that you know there are some key tips and tricks that have really helped me to be a uh, successful stylist behind the chair and have great clients that come back time and time again for decades and you know i think that is one of the things that actually, in the beginning when I form a relationship with a client, I always talk about products, I always talk about styling their hair, I always try and show them how to style their hair. But obviously as time goes on, you start talking about grandchildren and dogs and Land Rovers and whatever you're gonna talk about. Beyond, you know, the actual service, it is kind of important to just recap sometimes. Sally 
is a client and it's really important that we help Sally help herself to make her hair look the best it can when we're not doing it. And you will have heard a million times or you as a client watching this will have had a haircut that you've gone away and you cannot style because you weren't given the tips and tricks to style it with. I think that's really valuable. So thank you, Sally, for that wake up call. Um, so there's a few things I wanna do to this now just to kind of refine it and, and kind of make it uh, work better. Sally generally sort of uh, sweeps her hair over slightly and I think it's working reasonably well. I think this corner's just a little long uh, if we're gonna be sweeping it over to the side like that, um, which is the kind of preferred way it's sweeping naturally. So you just take that little piece of hair in its one section of hair and just point cut the ends on it and uh, just make it work a little better. I think it looks a bit chunky through here as well. Um, so we're gonna take that piece of hair there and elevate that hair up to uh, 45 degrees, the angle that we cut it at. And again, just working through point cutting the section uh, just to create a little bit more kind of softness in on the edge. We don't wanna to go to town on texturizing Sally's hair, although we wanna create texture as again, medium to fine, and we don't wanna overdo the texturizing and personalizing because there is something to be said for keeping it a little chunkier in terms of texture and that will help Sally's hair to behave. You can see the texture better rather than when you texturize what you tend to do is slim the ends and everything sits a bit more succinct so it goes from sitting on top of each other which looks textured to slim and then it can just look flat and actually you go the opposite way it goes from textured to flat so that's something to remember with texturizing. A little hot tip for you there but you know really work the hair make sure that you're kind of happy with the way it's sitting and the way that kind of it looks on Sally. Obviously she's got a mask on I know that lots of you will be like oh the mask but you know it's Covid time you know we're being realistic here and um i know what sally's face looks like because i've cut her hair way before this ever happened so i know that you know on her face shape this kind of height is good um sally's face is quite slim so we don't want to create loads of height and not much width because that will unbalance create like a long face shape we want a bit of width uh, through the shape and we want a little bit of height a little bit of volume in sally's hair that's really important to remember if the face shape is slim don't make the hair too high because it just takes everything up and makes the head look longer you need a balance of the two width and height if you've got a bigger face shape, then well, take it, you know, around the head, take it up, you know, elongate that face shape out a bit. But, you know, really try and think about that as, you know, you go through the technique. I am pretty pleased with how this is looking so far and uh, it's given Sally some really nice texture movement and uh, and it's actually given her a haircut that she could just blast and go, which is uh, easy. Winner, 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 chicken dinner. Um, in terms of the perimeter, you know, doing that haircut where we cut. Uh, if we look at the perimeters, I haven't refined the perimeter at all. Uh, I'm gonna come and check that now, but you can see by cutting the hair just that five millimeters longer than uh, the hair underneath, we've created a really nice blunt clean line uh, that runs through there there's a couple of longer hairs just hiding there that we can kind of refine our freehand and there's a little bit of you know refining to do but seriously guys there's absolutely hardly any refining to do so i hope you've enjoyed this softer bixie haircut thank you very much for watching this week's episode as i said in the beginning subscribe for more content like this thumbs up it really helps the videos and thank you for watching to the very end very much helps the algorithm push these videos out to a wider audience it is equivalent of telling your friends all about. Until next time, guys, see you again very soon. Thank you, Sally. Thank you.